with the supply chain broken caused by COVID, import-export companies suffered tremendous loss in 2020, 2021, and 2022. This company we represented lost millions in revenue, as well as increased cost in expense because of the freight delays and additional costs to bring goods into the country. Now, the biggest devastation is the employees that they are trying to sponsor to get a green card because does the company have the ability to pay their salary? Because after years of fighting through the backlog and wage determination, the PERM application, the audits, finally the company is ready to file the I-140 application for the employee, right? In this case, it was an EB-3 employee for a marketing specialist. Well, does the company have the ability to pay? That is a crucial question we needed to answer. But if you look at the tax returns, if you look at the financial statements, it doesn't look good. If this case is denied, the client has to start all over again, it will be a nightmare. We did our best to make the argument, we filed it, and within two months, the case was approved without a request for evidence. Let me share with you how. Hi everyone, my name is Joseph. I'm the managing partner here at Zan Associates, where we solve legal problems with creative solutions. So the legal problem is that when you sponsor somebody as a company, you must show the government that you have the ability to pay their salary. Problem is, if you don't have enough funds in your bank account, then you can't afford the salary. Now, it's crazy to think about that from the company's perspective. They've already waited years and they proved that no U.S. worker can do this job. Nobody is applying. And the government is gonna come in and challenge that your company can't afford it. It would be easy if this foreign national was already working for the company and already receiving a salary, but they're not. It would have been easy if the company had a you know high revenue to be able to show that they can sponsor this employee, but the revenue decreased over the years and the expenses increased because of COVID. What makes it even more difficult is that USCIS issued a new memo on the ability to pay issue. And this new memo said that all financial documents needs to be audited. That's crazy expensive to get every single one of your financial documents audited to prove that you can afford this employee. Just auditing your financial statements might have cost more than the annual salary of this employee. It all fell on grace. It fell on her and her department to gather everything to make the argument. And she did. And so this was the argument that they used. The first page, we really laid out what the position is and the salary and how low it is, et cetera, right? And, and how big the company is, just to get it in the officer's mindset that, oh, this case should be easily approvable. Then when we went on to the ability to pay section, we provided the previous year's tax return that looked good. The current year that obviously doesn't look good, but we still mentioned the good outstanding financials that the company did have, the amount of assets that they have, the revenue that they have, the number of employees that they have. We didn't get the financial audits, right? But we did include the actual tax returns from the previous year. So those you don't need audited, but the new ones we didn't include, but we provided other things, the bank statements and stuff that doesn't need to necessarily be audited because they're the formal primary documents. So we included everything. And we argued that this person's uh, salary can be covered. It was a straightforward two page brief with uh, 10 exhibits um, and all the corresponding forms it looks simple, but the pain that this issue caused lasted months, right? The employee overseas was stressing out about it. The company itself knew about this problem and uh, was really dis discussing whether or not they should just withdraw the case. And we had to convince them not to because you could always, you know, uh, uh, withdraw it at the RFE stage. Grace and her team did a really good job in communicating with all stakeholders and explaining why we did what we did. There was no request for evidence. The case was approved. Our entire team celebrated. We're very, very happy with the outcome. But so many people think that the EB3, EB2 green card process, the hardest part is just the beginning, right? Just the perm stage is the hardest. The I-140 is just a form, super simple. That's not the case, right? After the perm gets approved, the years of waiting, the guidance, the preparation, and, and getting everything together to file, that in itself is, 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 is an art. And if this part isn't done correctly, then everything else was in vain. 
With that, if you have any questions about ability to pay or EB3, feel free to reach out. Take care. Bye-bye.